In this video, uh, I want to look at an application of utilizing a discrete probability distribution. And from the following uh, table right here, what we want, want to do is that we want to be able to forecast where the S&P will be, say, 12 months from today. And in doing that, uh, we need to come up with an expected value and standard deviation variability. Uh, of a scenario that we're going to set forth. And the scenario is right here. In other words, we have five scenarios of where the market may be. One scenario is, oh, the market's going to be down 14%. We will assign a 10% probability. Next scenario, on change, 20% probability. 15% where the market may be. We're going to assign a 40% probability. 25%, 20% probability, 44%, and a 10%. So, with this scenario, um, pretty easy to come up with the expected value, or in this case, what I refer to it as the expected mean for the next 12 months, is to simply take the product of what we expect from each scenario times the probability that we're going to assign, and then simply sum up the individual um, means, and we come up with 14%. So the 14% is really what we expect based on these scenarios, based upon these scenarios that we'll say has been put forth or worked work forth by, say, a financial analyst or uh, an investment analyst. So, 14% is our expected mean. To come up with a standard deviation, and I'll talk more about the relevancy and the importance of the standard deviation when I talk about the coefficient of variation. But the standard deviation, uh, we'll say for the first case, is to simply take, oh, we expect in the first scenario the market to be down 14% minus what the expected mean or the expected value happens to be. Take the difference in square 784. And we would do that likewise with each one. 0 minus 14 squared is 196 uh, all the way down the line. Then what we have to do in the last column here is to take the square differences, like in the first case, 784, and then simply multiply it by 10%. 10% 10 of 784 is 78.4. We do that for each scenario, sum them up, and the sum is 232.2. Keep in mind, that's not the standard deviation. That is the variance. So to get the standard deviation, we simply take the square root and we come up with 15.24. Moving over to this coefficient of variation. Don't get confused between variance and coefficient of variation. Coefficient of variation is a relative measure whereby we are we are taking the standard deviation, 15.24, and we're dividing it by the expected mean. So standard deviation by the mean, and we come up with 1.09, or we put it to a base of 100, it's 109. Now let me just talk about the, uh, uh, the importance of the coefficient of variation. In finance, since we're utilizing <clears throat> the discrete probability distribution as an application uh, to arrive at the expected mean and standard deviation. How is it used? In finance, let's assume that we have project A and project B. What we will do is that we will always select the project that has the smallest coefficient of variation. And again, you can kind of read this in, in, in the text. But the reason being, like coming back up here, we expect 14%, but we know, but we know it, undoubtedly it's not going to be 14% of prime vary. Um, and that's why we calculate the standard deviation to indicate the amount of variability. So when we have like project A and project B, we always want to select the project that has the smallest coefficient of variation, because that is the one that we are certain, have a greater certainty, 
of earning, we'll say, the mean.